All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Katie Schiffer, and I created Schiffer Consulting, a communications firm for mission-driven organizations. Professor Amy Chandler of the College of Communication mentored me throughout this undertaking. If a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? Many nonprofits are like these falling trees. Nobody can hear their impact. Why? Nonprofit PR departments are understaffed and underfunded in comparison to those of the private and public sectors. As a result, for profit entities use PR to advance their agendas, while nonprofits perform life changing work without widespread public awareness and support. I thought to myself, this needs to end now. So I launched Schiffer Consulting, a pro bono communications firm, to bridge the PR gap in the nonprofit sector. By teaching nonprofits about the PR tactics of for profit entities, I made it my mission that the trees of the nonprofit sector would indeed make an audible and lasting sound. Before we talk about PR in the nonprofit sector, let's start by establishing a working definition of public relations. Now, according to the Public Relations Society of America, PR is a strategic communication process that builds mutually beneficial relationships between organizations and their publics. Now, when I talk about organizations, I mean corporations, governments, or nonprofits. And when we talk about publics, we mean any audience that has a vested interest in that particular organization. It could be an analyst, a consumer, a donor, a journalist, or even a volunteer. So this definition gets at how PR practitioners aren't spin doctors, they're strategists, and they're using the media to create these relationships between organizations and their publics. I think that the essence of PR can be distilled to a single word, and that word is teaching. PR practitioners leverage the media to educate minds and also move markets. Just as school teachers use curriculum and textbooks to teach, PR practitioners use the PESO model to inform their publics. Has anybody ever heard of the PESO model? Kate has. <laughs> so what is the PESO model? PESO is an acronym for Paid, Earned, Shared, and Owned Media. So let's talk through this model for a bit. Paid media is all about camouflage, so hence the iguana on the screen here. It's all about using money to pay for a piece of content, to place it into a particular medium, and make it appear as though it's a natural, organic fit. So for paid media, an example could be an advertorial in a newspaper or a sponsored post on a social media platform. Next, we have earned media. And to know me is to know that I absolutely love a birthday. And earned media is all about the party, in particular, a type of party called third party credibility. And third party credibility speaks to how when someone who is not employed by an organization, when someone is not paid by an organization, makes a favorable claim about that organization, the validity and the credibility of that claim increases exponentially underscoring the importance of instituting and sustaining relationships with media gatekeepers like journalists. The next type of media in this PESO model is shared media. So when you're waiting for public transportation, when you're in line at Starbucks for your latte, in line at the grocery store, what is everybody doing? They're on their phone and they're on these social media platforms from Facebook to LinkedIn to Instagram to Twitter. And shared media is changing the game because it's a form of uncontrolled messaging and it allows for organizations to have dynamic two-way conversations with their publics. And last but certainly not least in this PESO model, we have owned media. And with owned media, I like to think about the keys to the house because it's a form of controlled messaging that the organization has complete jurisdiction and authority over from content creation to dissemination. So this could be something like a blog, a website, a podcast, a webinar, an app. The list goes on. For-profits have this PESO model down pat. So I wanted to bring the PESO model to the nonprofit sector to amplify the causes of mission-driven organizations. My objective with Schiffer Consulting was to empower the trees of the nonprofit sector to make an audible and lasting sound. So how did I build my business? The first step was branding. I spent the summer before senior year developing a company name, creating a slogan, 
developing a website for my consultancy, and also honing the communication services that I would offer to my clients. It's hard to have a consultancy without clients, wouldn't you say? So the next step was pitching new business prospects. Through networking and pitching, I secured three mission-driven clients. First, the Commonwealth Institute, which elevates women business leaders through professional development and networking opportunities. Second, the Carroll School, which boasts three educational institutions that teach students with language-based learning disabilities. And third, the North End Music and Performing Arts Center, which empowers artists of all ages through music education and performance programming. These nonprofits never had strategic communication plans prior to their engagements with Schiffer Consulting because they lacked the funds as well as the staff. Before Schiffer Consulting, client approaches to communications were reactive rather than proactive. So the first order of business for me was to create these strategic communication plans. The purpose of each approximately 20-page plan was to transform communications from opportunistic to strategic. I spent weeks learning everything that there was to know about each particular client's industry and programming from qualitative interviews to website audits, I gathered the information that I needed to align business objectives with PR goals. The next step was presenting and implementing a part of each communication plan. As I speak to these steps, I'll outline a case study for one of my clients, the North End Music and Performing Arts Center, also referred to as NEMPAC, to show and to bring my consulting to life. In NEMPAC's case, I presented the completed communications plan to its entire staff, including the executive director as well as the branding and marketing manager. And I could see the energy in the room shift as I spoke throughout the meeting. Because of the plan, communications at NEMPAC was no longer a puzzle to solve. Instead, it was an organized map to follow. At this point, it became evident that NEMPAC needed a way to evolve its storytelling to bring its mission to a wider audience. Here was a nonprofit that welcomed world-renowned performers to its North End stage, that educated hundreds of students each year through its educational programming. Yet there were some North End neighbors who didn't know the full extent of NEMPAC's offerings. To take its business and its communications to the next level and to capitalize on these organizational assets, NEMPAC needed to do the following. Talk more about who it was rather than what it did. Make less statements and tell more stories. Shift the mindset from convincing stakeholders to act to inspiring them to take action of their own accord. And focus less on sending out messages and focus more on building shared meaning. By leveraging communications, the client could capitalize on all of the organizational assets this gem of a nonprofit boasted. So my client and I negotiated a scope of work, and we agreed that I would create a blog for the nonprofit to generate word of mouth by fostering brand recognition and mindshare. The first blog post I wrote for NEMPAC was a recap of the nonprofit's fourth annual holiday concert featuring Handel's Messiah. This particular slide includes a quote from that blog post. I was actually able to attend the concert at St. Leonard's Church in the North End, and I watched with awe as seasoned performers took the stage alongside the next generation of rising artists for a musical experience that literally would have brought you all to tears. So in addition to these blog posts featuring performance spotlights, I also wrote posts featuring how-to guides to establish NEMPAC as a thought leader, to establish NEMPAC as an authority on all things music and performing arts. Topics ranged from how to maintain a consistent rehearsal schedule to how to determine whether buying or renting a musical instrument is right for your family. My client at NEMPAC was so impressed with the blog that she asked me to author the nonprofit's annual report. This yearly report for NEMPAC's publics, including but certainly not limited to concert goers, donors, and students, captured business objectives, financial performance, and programming offerings. Now, one of the objectives of this report was to showcase how NEMPAC's two distinct organizational functions, as a music school and also as a performing arts center, integrated to empower not only the next generation of artists, but also seasoned musicians. I developed key messaging and authored content that articulated not only who NEMPAC was, but also what it did. 
And this method of storytelling showed how music education and professional performances are synergistic at NEMPAC, as demonstrated by this quote. So to wrap up the case study, here's a snapshot of NEMPAC by the numbers, or a list of deliverables I crafted on behalf of the nonprofit throughout the engagement. First, we have the strategic communication plan that provided a step-by-step -step framework for communications to take them from reactive to proactive. Next, the content calendar and recommendations for blog post themes that created a framework for the blog that I then created. And finally, the long form annual report was disseminated to NEMPAC's board of directors and is displayed on NEMPAC's website for both returning and new members of the nonprofit's family to learn and to read. And last but certainly not least, the short form annual report will serve as an organizational brochure to compel prospective donors, sponsors, and students to action in the months and the years to come. So in conclusion, Schiffer Consulting was absolutely a labor of love that allowed me to fuel my entrepreneurial spirit while at the same time implementing strategic communications on behalf of three nonprofit organizations. I think the thing I'm most proud of is the sustainable change that I was able to initiate on behalf of each of these three organizations. I always took the time to explain the how and the why of each action that we took to clients to give them the knowledge and the tools that they would need to continue implementing a proactive communication strategy past the end of this date of the Keystone Project. Through collaborative partnerships and an embodiment of each client's mission, I was able to build a communications infrastructure so they could replicate the PR success we achieved together past my involvement. I'm confident that my three clients, these three trees of the nonprofit sector, shall we say, currently make and will continue to make an audible and lasting sound. Thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions? What's one of the biggest challenges that you encountered in these three different clients, whether it was one of them or a common trend that was just something really hard that you had to learn how to overcome? Absolutely. So, you know, I think that putting myself out there and building the business at the get-go and pitching and securing these three clients, that was a major challenge at the beginning and really convincing the nonprofits that this would be a worthwhile endeavor for them and could really amplify their organization as a whole and showing the role that communications had because previously they didn't have the staff or the budget to invest at this level. Thank you so much. All right, thank you.